Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Karen Dina, and today I'm going to talk about the vitamin B12 folate connection. Now to get started, let's take a look at the molecules that are involved in this interaction. The first one here is folate. Now folate has a scientific name of tetrahydrofolate. And it's important for a variety of reactions in the body, especially the production of DNA, also known as our genetic code, and red blood cells. The word folate is derived from the Latin root folium, which means leaf. So folate got its name from foliage, which makes sense because leafy greens are generally a good source of folate. Our next molecule is vitamin B12. Now the scientific name for vitamin B12 is cobalamin. And if we take a look at this vitamin B12 structure here, you can see that at the center of the molecule, there is cobalt. And that's where vitamin B12 got its name. Now one of the human bioactive forms of vitamin B12 is a type of cobalamin called methylcobalamin. And what that is, is vitamin B12 cobalamin with a methyl group on it. Our next molecule is methionine. And methionine is one of the essential amino acids and it comes from proteins in our diet. Our next molecule is SAM, also known as SAMe or S-adenosyl methionine. Now SAM is involved in a variety of reactions throughout the body, specifically methylation reactions. And we'll see what that is in just a couple of minutes. Our next molecule is homocysteine, which is generally associated with inflammation in the human body. And it tends to be high in people with a vitamin B12 deficiency. So let's summarize the molecules that we looked at. We've got folate, also known as tetrahydrofolate. We have cobalamin, vitamin B12, methionine, SAM, homocysteine, and then a variety of other intermediates. Now let's take a look at how all of these molecules interact in regard to vitamin B12 and folate. What we have here is a rather complicated looking pathway known as the folate, vitamin B12, methionine, homocysteine pathway. And the best way to explain it is to start at the beginning. So we'll start down here with folate. If you remember from what I said earlier, the scientific name of folate is tetrahydrofolate. So folate here is converted into methylene tetrahydrofolate, which can take a couple of different pathways. It can either go into DNA synthesis or red blood cell synthesis, or it can be converted into 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. It's important to point out here that this form of folate, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, has a methyl group on it. And what happens next is very interesting. This methyl group is transferred to cobalamin to form methylcobalamin. And then that same methyl group is transferred to homocysteine to form methionine. So to summarize what we have seen so far, the methyl group starts up here with 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate it's then transferred to cobalamin to form methylcobalamin, and then it is transferred to homocysteine to form methionine. So the methyl group starts here, then it comes down here, and now it's up here in the form of methionine. And what happens after that is that methionine is converted into SAM, also known as S-adenosyl methionine. The methyl group then is transferred into other methylation reactions. And when SAM loses that methyl group, it becomes homocysteine. Now, why is this complicated pathway so important? It is in the context of a vitamin B12 deficiency. So here's our pathway right here, just to refresh your memory. Now, if we take vitamin B12 out of the equation, what happens is that our methyl group gets trapped up here as 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate and it isn't able to turn homocysteine into methionine. And for people who don't eat a large amount of folate, then the ability to make DNA and red blood cells may be compromised. And in addition to that, homocysteine levels start to rise. So to summarize here, in a vitamin B12 deficiency, we tend to see 
elevated levels of homocysteine. And DNA and red blood cell production may slow down. This is called a methylfolate trap. In other words, folate gets trapped as 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. Here is a question that I'm asked in relation to this topic. How can folate mask a vitamin B12 deficiency? In order to answer this question, I have to give you a little bit of background information. So let's get started with red blood cells. Now when red blood cells are produced from bone marrow, they start off as being pretty large. And as they mature, they get smaller until they reach their appropriate size. Now usually in a vitamin B12 deficiency, the red blood cells stay large because there isn't enough folate for their maturation. Here is a picture of our pathway without vitamin B12 in it. As you can see here, we have folate from our diet that gets converted into methylene tetrahydrofolate, which can then go into DNA synthesis or red blood cell formation. But if somebody doesn't have much folate in their diet, their ability to make red blood cells is going to be affected. So here's what we tend to see in a vitamin B12 deficiency. We tend to see large red blood cells. They're also called macrocytes. And here is what normal red blood cells look like for comparison. On the contrary, when there's large amounts of folate in one's diet, the body doesn't need vitamin B12 to regenerate folate in order to make more red blood cells. In this situation, there's a constant supply of folate from the diet. This extra amount of dietary folate can be used to produce DNA and red blood cells. Once again, when we have a constant supply of folate from the diet, the production of DNA and red blood cells is going to be less dependent on the conversion of 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate back into folate. So the red blood cells may be of normal size. Now it's important to note that this may not always happen with everyone that consumes a substantial amount of folate. But it certainly can happen and it has happened. Situations like this show us how important it is to get accurate vitamin B12 testing, especially for people who eat a plant-based diet that may contain substantial amounts of folate. The bottom line here is that vitamin B12 is used for a variety of reactions throughout our body. So knowing our vitamin B12 status is very important and we can achieve that through reliable vitamin B12 testing. And for those of you interested in learning more about vitamin B12 or other raw food or plant-based nutrition related topics, please visit our website at rawfoodeducation.com where you can learn about our Science of Raw Food Nutrition series of classes that we teach at the Living Light Institute here in Northern California or our Science of Raw Food Nutrition Level 1 online course. And if you're interested in B12 or other types of lab testing and nutrition consulting, please visit our website at rawfoodconsulting.com. Thanks for watching. And if you found this information to be useful or interesting, please like, share, and subscribe.